Parents never knew Jesus because no one ever preached to them. Jesus saw within me and said, You're not happy. Yes, Lord, I responded, realizing that he knew the reason for my despondency. A time of tender quietness followed. Then I said, Lord, I never want to leave you. His presence was the only true security I'd ever known. My daughter, you have much work to do. I want you to write a book. This is an important book for the last days, and it will be translated into many languages. I chose you for this work before you were born, and this is why my Holy Spirit is always shaking your body to pour my power into you. If you did not have the power of the Holy Spirit, I could not use you. You must remember that my power began working in you when you first opened your heart to me. You are the daughter I trust to do this work for me. Lord, I don't know anything. You don't have to know. I will be teaching and guiding you in everything. Tell everyone that I'm ready for whoever is ready and waiting for me. I love you, my daughter. I began to cry, and the Lord took my hand and said, I will take you back. After we changed our clothing, we returned to the beach and sat together for a while. The Lord spoke to me. I still have more to show you, and I want you to wait for me. But we plan to go to my daughter's place next week. Stay home, my daughter. I do not want you to travel anywhere for a while. What I'm doing with you is too important for me and all my children, so I want you to concentrate on everything I show you and tell you until everything is done. Be patient. I will do anything you tell me to do, I said. Nothing is more important than your work. Thank you, my daughter. I still have a lot of work for you to do. I know you're tired, so get your rest. He left me and my body stopped shaking. Then, as usual, I wrote down everything I had seen and heard. In essence, Christianity is so simple that it eludes so many. Human beings have a tendency to need to complicate everything, including matters of faith. Jesus simply wants people to come to him in faith so he can lead them and help them. I now knew more fully than I had ever known before that whosoever will may come to him and receive eternal life. His word states it plainly. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3.16 A SMOKING PIT The next day, March 3, was filled with many new, God-given experiences. From 2.30 a.m. until 4.50 a.m., the Lord was with me. He began his visit by saying, My daughter, this is your Lord. I know you're tired, but I must show you more things. For 15 minutes before his visit, my body shook uncontrollably. He took my hand and we walked along an earthly beach. It was a new sight for our visits to the seashore. There were many trees and bushes. We climbed over a narrow road that was lined with trees and bushes. We strolled along this lane, which wound around a mountain that we ascended rapidly. Near the summit, we rested on a huge rock that was shaped something like a gigantic bear. I looked toward the ocean and I noticed that its waters had turned to blood once more. Again, I saw people running on the beach. These were not casual joggers. They were running in fear and panic. The panorama before us helped me understand what they were running from. To my left, the mountains and the buildings situated on each mountainside were all ablaze. It was an inferno worse than the annual brush fires that plagued the citizens of Southern California. Next, 
I noticed huge fires bursting forth everywhere. People were on fire. Some were jumping into the ocean for relief, but when they stepped into the water, they would fall because of the fire. Everyone had become a human torch. I began to scream in horror and compassion for those I saw. The bloody ocean had turned into a cauldron of blazing brimstone. The sand was a bed of hot, flaming coals. The people were running from the fire that pursued them, surrounded them, and licked hungrily at their bodies. A few of them were naked and had no protection at all from the fire. It was futile anyway, for there was no escape from the scorching enemy that threatened to devour them. They could not flee to the mountains because they were engulfed in flames. No place was safe. I was screaming the whole time, and I began to sob, Lord, what is happening? You must remember, my daughter, that I am showing you these things so you will be able to let everyone know what is going to happen soon. When will this happen, Lord? After I bring my children home. Many people do not believe my word. That's why I want you to write a book that describes your experience with me. I want the whole world to see this book and I want them to realize that I am ready for them. I love all my children, but I cannot bring them to my kingdom if they're not ready for me. I will never force my children to do anything if they don't have a heart for me. I have been planning for you to do this work for a long time because my kingdom is completely ready now. The Lord had to keep on reminding me and reassuring me of His plans because I was still so stunned that He had chosen me for such an important assignment. It was beyond my ability to comprehend the enormity of it all. The implications of the Lord's words to me were overwhelmingly important. There was a part of me that wanted to shrink from such an all-consuming work but my commitment to obey the Lord in all things kept me going. I knew that He was preparing me for an end times work of epic proportions, and I was thrilled and yet intimidated. I knew He still had much work to do in my life. I will take you to heaven again. Once we had arrived in heaven, we did not take time to go through the usual procedures. The Lord immediately led us away to the pit we had seen yesterday outside the gates of the kingdom. This time we did not change our clothing. To get there, we had to walk on a mountainside, through a dark tunnel, and on to the summit of the mountain. When we arrived at the top, we looked down into a yawning pit that was so wide and deep that it appeared to be endless. It was a frightening, disturbing scene. The Lord said, I want you to see this again. It was so hard to look into the pit of hell, but immediately my attention was directed toward a figure who was waving at me. Through the smoky haze, I could determine that the person was a woman. Then I heard her voice. She was speaking in my native Korean tongue, and she began to scream, Hot! Hot! I knew that voice. The smoke cleared and I looked directly into the eyes of the tormented woman. I immediately recognized my mother. She stretched out her right hand and waved it at me, saying, So hot! So hot! I remember so clearly her eyes and my eyes meeting, and the way her eyes begged me to help her. My very own mother was screaming for help from the gaping pit of Hades. My heart stopped. A knife of cold hopelessness stabbed at my heart. My mother was in hell. I felt as if the boulder I was sitting on was on top of me. I wanted so desperately to reach out and take my mother's hand so that I could lift her from the licking tongues of fire that swirled around her. It was the worst moment of my life. There is no word in the dictionary that truly identifies what I felt at that moment. It was a mixture of fear desperation, hurt, terror, sadness, and hopelessness. Then I realized that these were the very emotions that my mother would have to experience throughout all eternity. My mother had died when she was 40, but her face looked the